Bailiff of Hanukkah to everybody uh, during this uh, great week of Hanukkah, especially when we have the Pasha of Miketz, where in some of the uh, commentaries there is a message that takes in the Yontif of Hanukkah conceptually and Yosef in his role here when he comes from the dungeon of prison to the highest rank of Egypt just under the rule of Paro and it's a message for the Jewish people. Now let me just give you a, a little why I call this a snippet of uh, insight which explains this particular idea of the individuality and the attachment of Yosef uh, to, uh, to observance and to representing the highest standard of individuality of the Jewish people as Yosef and, and particularly in his time when it was before the Jewish people were called an Am and they were called a patriarchal family. The Torah tells us in the Parshas Miketz that uh, after the Sar HaMashkim, the cub bearer to the Paro tells Paro that there was somebody in the prison, a Nar Eved Ivri, a boy, a, a slave, a Hebrew, uh, each word was used in a very degrading manner uh, because that's how he described him and nevertheless he said he was able to interpret dreams so Paro has him taken out of the dungeon so in the interest of, of being concise and direct where the Pusik says there that Yosef had to change his clothes or Yechalev Simlesov after all, he was a prisoner in a dank dungeon, whatever it was. And it says, by Yegalach, literally means he shaved or took a haircut. And uh, he stood, he's there before Paro. So there is an observation, and this might sound rather strange, in the Targum, in the Targum Unculus, which is the great Targum of Teru Shabal Peh on the Chumash, and he translates the word by Yegala, Visapar. Now the word visapar in its true etymological meaning does not mean shaving. It means just cutting the hair, but as if to say without and leaving the hair there. So what's the significance of this very uh, translation which seems to change the meaning of the text? So the famous Agachova Gon of Yosef Rosen both in, his, in the commentary that we have from him on Chumash and in his Truvos, says that this has to do with something that Yosef observed a long time. According to Chazal, according to our rabbinic sages, Yosef was a Nazir Olam. He was a lifetime Nazir, a Nazarite. And as a Nazarite, besides the question of drinking wine or whatever else, we can say, he had to let his hair grow. But a Nazarite, according to Chazal, mentioned in, in several places in Shas, especially in Masech the Nazir, had his mekel betaro, that when the hair became too heavy, he could cut some of it, not to shave it all off, but to cut it. So it's, this is remarkable. Why is it remarkable? Because here, in the midst of all of this pressure that was put on a, a person of Yosef so isolated from his family, from his background, from the patriarchal house, from the teachings of his father, Yaakov Avinu, here he observed, he observed the laws of being a Nozer, the way the Targum explains it. The Sapar, even when he has to appear before Paro, he's, so to speak, cleaned up, he's presentable, but he still observes his Nazirahs. And Yosef is called by Yaakov Avinu in the Bochas and Parshas Vayechi, Nazir Echov. He's the Nazir of his brothers, which can have a variance of meanings. So what is this uh, little snippet of halachic insight of, of the of the of God, of Yosef Rosenzal, have as a conceptual idea? It represents what I would use the title of a famous book, uh, that was written by President Kennedy, JFK. He wrote a famous book called Profiles in Courage. Uh, a 
uh, descriptions of individuals who stood up against a majority or against other uh, types of ethical rules or conduct and became, we would say, heroes, to use that particular term, when everything else seemed to be against them. Here, Yosef represents a spiritual giant in the midst of the glittering attractions of the Egyptian culture, which is totally against the way that he was raised in the Torah background of the uh, conduct of the Ovis, of morality, of, uh, of uh, being kind to other people, of chesed, everything that the Ovis represented what became fused together in the life of Yosef. And even when he was in this Egyptian society, he still remains a separate individual. He still has his identity. The Chazal say that Yosef was Zeicher, he had the schus to be buried in El Yisrael because he never hid the fact that he was an Ivri, that he was Jewish. Whereas the Gemara and the, the Chazal say it in contrast even to Moshe Rabbeinu when he came to uh, the well there in the desert in Midian, he was identified by the daughters of Yisro as an Ish Mitzri. He didn't look like a Jew. Yosef always represent that particular singularity of being identified. So that's a profile of spiritual and behavioral courage. And that's connected to Hanukkah. The Hanukkah, when we say in the al a brief historical snippet, so to speak, and what do we say? The whole what we call the Hasmonean Rebellion came about through a, a, an individual and his family. It was uh, Matasyo from the Hasmonean family of Kayanim with his sons. They stood up against the even majority, a great majority of Jewish people that were misyavni. They were infused and permeated by the Hellenistic culture, whatever that represents. Again, a, a immorality against the behavior of uh, Jewish people and idolatry and whatever that brought with it and the lack of what we say extreme chesed which uh, the Jewish people are raised which is part of the very fabric of our existence. So you have again here a profile of courage of a group that stood up against a great majority like we say rabim miyad miyatim. Many were given over into the hands of the few. And that's what Yosef represents, standing out, always identified, and the Chashmanoim. That's the message that we have contact with Hanukkah. But not only is it a message only for, uh, for Hanukkah, it's a, I would say, a religious historical message for the Jewish people. All our history is where we have suffered different things by different peoples, different times, different areas of the diaspora of exile where we remain steadfast. There was always that strong, steadfast attachment of Kiddush Hashem, of sanctifying Hashem's name and observing mitzvos, and that we were identified as Jewish. Unfortunately, there were those that strayed, those that assimilated, and they're not mentioned anymore. They don't belong, so to speak, to the heritage of the Jewish people. And that's what Hanukkah represents, both from the standpoint of Yosef, Matasyo, Ubanov, and also the Jewish people. But even there's a personal message. When the Torah describes the trials and tribulations of Yosef, he suffers from a lot of emotional things, from, from, first from the brothers, from the family, and he's thrown into a pit, and he's, he's thrown into a dungeon, he has what we would call in a lifetime of a person highs and lows. Sometimes you have a person in this, each individual in their personal life has times of, of great elation, seems to be of success and pride, and other times there's depression. There is pessimism. And nevertheless, Yosef never allowed himself to remain in that state, what we say, in a spiritual dungeon. 
He always survived, he came out. That's a lesson, not only from the standpoint of the Jewish experience of the totality of living a Torah life, but for each individual, we have to understand there are highs and lows in a person's life. He has to be able to overcome the depression and pessimism that sometimes every one of us, and no one really could be excluded if he's a true feeling, sensitive human being, suffers from some of these emotions. But nevertheless, he comes out on top. That's what Yosef represents. And I think in the end, the near Hanukkah, the light of Hanukkah itself represents that optimism. In spite of everything that took place, the whole ness, the way the rabbis say, and Rashi says it in, in the Sefer the Shabbos, on my Hanukkah, on what was the ness established by the Chachomim, not so much for the wars, but for the light, the ness of Hanukkah, which represented, represents an optimistic view of illumination of being light, of bringing light and out of darkness. Because when a person is in a dark place, that's a very pessimistic type of feeling. It's very, de it's, it's depressing. When you bring light into a room or to a place where the sun shines, we become much more of light-minded, light-minded in a sense, more optimistic about the day, about the future. And that's what the Ne'er Hanukkah should bring us to that realization. And we all should hope and pray that in spite of all the different things that are happening in the world, and there are many dangerous events that take place from day to day, they only have to listen to the news reports, nevertheless, the Jewish people remain steadfast as the eternal Jewish people looking to light and optimistic view of the future. And also, ultimately, the Bia's girl said it. The re true redemption of Am Yisrael for uh, Klau Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael, Bia's girl said it, Bimheira Biyameinu, Efreilach and Chanukah to all.